Welcome to Becoming a Sleep Consultant. I'm your host, Jane Havens, a certified sleep consultant and founder of both Snooze Fest by Jane Havens and Center for Pediatric Sleep Management. On this podcast, I'll be discussing the business side of sleep consulting. You'll have an insider's view on launching, growing, and even scaling a sleep consulting business. This is not a podcast about sleep training. This is a podcast about business building and entrepreneurship. Ruth is a certified sleep consultant with a background of 14 years in childcare. Her interest on the topic of sleep was inspired by her husband when he helped her overcome her own sleep struggles. Sleep deprivation took a huge toll on her physical and mental health. She knew she had to better her sleep, but didn't know where to start. She began to do extensive research and slowly but gradually began to apply everything she learned in her own life first. She is a big believer in teaching by example and felt the burden to share her own experiences and sleep journey with others who struggle too. The passion she had for sleep, plus the support of her amazing husband, led to her starting her own sleep consulting practice, Paradox LLC. Through her business, she has been able to support families and children facing sleep deprivation through her online one-to-one sleep support packages. Her sleep consulting business is centered on both the child and the parent. She believes sleep training is not just an opportunity to teach a child to learn independent sleep, but also to provide tired, exhausted parents the support and tools they need to set them up for ongoing success. She is determined to continue supporting families and give them the care they deserve. Ruth, welcome to the Becoming a Sleep Consultant podcast. I am very excited to have you on the show today. Thank you so much. I genuinely love your podcast so much. So I am so excited to be here. (laughs) I love that. Thank you for saying that. Before we get started, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and why you felt pulled to become a sleep consultant? Sure. So it was COVID time and I started getting very burnt out with my nannying job. I loved it so much and the pay was great. It's just, I knew I wanted more for myself. And apart from that, my husband just started his own business. So I began to envy him. I'm like, he has all this time. He has all this flexibility. And I'm here in my nine to seven job. And I can't really enjoy my time like that well. So we, I started to do endless, endless amounts of research. I thought, let me go back to school and finish my degree. I wanted to become a psychologist. I was midway into it. But I realized, yeah, that's not feasible at this point. I knew I wanted babies at some point. We wanted to try and have a family soon. I was like, this nannying job is just not going to cut it out for me. I want to be with my kids. I want to be a I want to be a, a mom, present mom there at the moment with my kiddos. So I started to do some soul searching. <laughs> started going through everything I can. And I was like, you know what, let me let me consider some of these positions that are being offered to me closer to home, better pay nannying jobs. And it was then that I met a mom, she wanted to hire me. And she said, Oh, yeah, my little one is struggling with sleep right now. And we just signed off with a sleep consultant. And it seemed like it didn't go too well. And I was like, well, what's going on? And she started giving me a little bit of background on what was happening. I was like, well, that's easy. You can do this, 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 and that. And the thing is, I always was good with kids, but I just didn't know the terminology to these things. So uh, everything, not to my surprise, everything worked. And she's like, oh my gosh, you would be so amazing. Can I sign you on full time and just come work for us? And I said, yeah, okay, we'll see. And it turns out I went on Google looked up sleep consulting and I found your podcast and my husband knows I was morning doing breakfast dinner and just listening to your podcast all the time I think I heard I heard everything in like a week I signed on for your call your discovery call together and I didn't really have much to ask you because I knew that this was the program I wanted to be in and here I am like I loved everything till now. And I have your program to thank for that, to be quite honest. (laughs) Yeah, I love your story. I love that you're sort of already a natural at this and just didn't have 
the maybe the language to use and and the sort of formatting in which you can support families, but you were already sort of doing it in an informal way. And now you have the tools to really do it professionally, which is so amazing. And I love that yeah. you said, I love that you said that you were envious of your husband's journey through entrepreneurship. That um <laughs> I really, I think that a lot of people probably can relate to that. Uh, you know, we see other people around us, whether it's our spouse or our friends or our siblings sort of doing these interesting and amazing things. And sometimes we just have to be willing to say yes to ourselves and go for it in our own lives, right? I always say like, nobody's gonna give it to you. You have to go out and get it. Oh, definitely. Yeah, he I can definitely say he was one of my biggest supporters, my cheerleaders, my inspiration to start all of this because I saw him doing it in his own life. So he was walking the walk. He wasn't just saying it. He was um, doing what he preached to me every day. <laughs> yeah, I love that. So the the reason this episode came about is because a couple of weeks ago, you shared a testimonial inside of our Facebook group for CPSM students and grads. And it was probably one of the best testimonials I have ever read. I wanted to bring you onto the podcast to share your experience working with this family so that our listeners could get a feel for the work that we do and how sleep consultants like you are out there sort of changing lives and, and saving <laughs> lives. Uh, would you give us a little bit of backstory, whatever you're comfortable sharing about this family? I'm wondering how did the mom find you and what were her circumstances that led to her needing support through sleep training? Yeah, definitely. So first and foremost, this mom, she says, Ruth, you changed my life. But Honestly, I think she changed my life. <laughs> she was just, it's just crazy to me. Uh, so the beginning of everything is I found her on Facebook on a mom's uh, sleep training group that uh, we were both on. And in desperation, she wrote, is there anyone that will take a single mom as a client? And I found that very interesting because normally uh, when well you, you're familiar with this these facebook mom groups they're not so blunt like that they're kind of like oh um my kiddo's going through such and such thing but they're not so blunt like that to say listen i need help is there anyone out there and i didn't quite understand why until we got on a call together and she revealed to me that she's been trying to find help and nobody wanted to take her on as a client so that for me was just so sad and very disappointing because I said, who in the world would not take you on as a client? We're here to uh, support moms. And to be quite honest, one of the, she shared with me, obviously for liability reasons, I cannot share with the, the company, but she did share with me who the company, the company, uh, the sleep training company that refused her services. And it's quite a big company. So I was very surprised. I'm like, seriously? So uh, apart from that, she told me that her kiddo was going through uh, some traumatic experiences because she su um, he suffered something in, uh, in that home. And aside from that, uh, she was just going through a lot in, her, in the co-parenting situation. So it's, it, it's a very particular situation. Uh, her kiddo was one week with her and one week with dad. So... A lot of sleep consultants were like, yeah, this is not doable. You need consistency. You need this, this, and that. This is just unrealistic. This cannot happen. So from the first moment we got on this call together, I told her, no, we can't do this. There's no reason why we can't do this. We can. And she's like, are you serious? And I was like, yeah, why not? So she was so grateful. And of course, um, when I sent her the sleep plan, she was still, she didn't believe that this could actually happen. And I told her, this can happen. We just, this is going to be like boot camp. We need to go all in. We need to do this as gradually and loving as possible because, of course, her kiddo went through a traumatic experience and we don't want to regress anything in any sort of way. So, yeah, I sent her the sleep plan and it was just amazing to see the transformation that her kiddo took. And not just that, but the impact that sleep had on mom and her seeing how confident her kiddo got it's kind of like that confidence was just so magnetic to her 
um, I'm not even lying how difficult some nights were. I would wake up to some messages and mom would be sobbing. Mom would be crying. Um, I would need to coach mom through some days because it was just so hard. This is a single mama that's doing this all by herself. So I knew I'm the only support she has in her life. I need to be there for her 120%. I need to take this seriously. And I, I always tell this to everyone. I was just saying this to someone the other day that when I took on this title as a sleep coach, yes, there's the sleep component to it. And your program is great because you set us up for success. So we know everything we need to know for sleep. We were prepared. We, we know uh, everything we need to do in the roughest situations possible. That's what your program does for us. But there's also the coaching part to it. And a lot of people come into this thinking, okay, um, I'm going to take on this business and I'm going to send a sleep plan. I'm going to send a few cute text messages. I am going to get a wonderful review once it, it's all done and get my next client. But the reality of it all is that as sleep consultants, the best ones, the ones that are separated from the average ones are what separates them is the coaching aspect to it. That's why clients keep coming back to them because they put a lot of love and a lot of uh, dedication into the coaching aspect of it. And I knew once going into this, I knew there was going to have to be a lot of coaching, a lot of my time. And I don't mind it because the results just give me so much dopamine. <laughs> so uh, it was just amazing to see where mom got, where her kiddo is right now, and just how just changing a few things can make a huge difference in a whole family's life. Yeah. <laughs> That's really incredible. It's really incredible. Can you talk us through the logistics of working with a mom who had her child with her for one week and then with dad for one week? I think, correct me if I'm wrong, you said that dad wasn't really on board with implementing any of this in his home, right? So you were really just establishing a new sense of normal in mom's home. So did you work together for one week and then take that week break and then work together for another week? Did you get it done in one week? What did that look like for you? Yeah. So going into this, I knew that we needed to do some prep work prior to starting. So I kind of gave her a list of things to do prior to starting to kind of get him adjusted to the new norm. So I told her, okay, you're going to have to get the okay to wake clock. Um, he, he was sleeping on a mattress on the floor and she was on the floor with him. So these, the both of them were just not getting really any sleep at night. So I told her he needs a big boy bed. We need to prep his room. We need to uh, make sure the room is dark. Um, we need to make sure he's there present when this bed is arriving. So when he comes back from dad's, he's not scared and like, well, what just happened here? This is not my room. So I, I kind of gave her a list of prep work because I knew we're not going to be able to just launch and start on the day that we start working together. So I gave her some prep work. And then on the day of, uh, I gave her kind of a list. So in the sleep plan, I wrote it out like I do with any other client. The difference here is that we broke it up into sections. So week one, uh, she followed with the chair method. It worked amazing. So what we did was just, we, every three days, we would pause and see how he was doing, kind of troubleshoot and see if it was going great. And if it did, then we moved on to the next step. And honestly, it was only up to probably when she was in the hallway that we needed to extend one more day. But honestly, he did so great. <laughs> uh, after the first week, yeah, we needed to pause. But that's where conversations come into play a lot. So I remember um, seeing you write on someone for someone on the Facebook group that uh, you gave like a little tip to put tape on the floor, painter's tape. So I was like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. So I took that little hack and I told her, you should put painter's tape on the floor and it can be like a visual thing for him too. So when he comes back from dad's and even before leaving to dad's, he can see the tape on the floor and understand, okay, mommy's going to be sitting there when I come back from dad's. So I would always tell her, Yes, conversation is great, but we're going to have to conversate with him even more because he's going to be in two different households. And this kiddo, for being in two different homes, 
he did so amazingly because sadly in that home there's not much structure around sleep so when he comes back to mom's it's kind of like he's kind of catching up on all that lost sleep that he didn't get at that so so yeah so we had to troubleshoot and just a lot of conversations a lot of conversations with him to help him understand okay so we're done here mama's gonna move now a, a little bit uh to the door and he'd be like, okay, great. And it got to the point where he's like, mommy out, mommy out and would close the door on her. <laughs> so it's just, it's amazing to see what, uh, how far this little boy has come. I always say that I really do believe that children crave boundaries and limits and, and sleep. And so when children are living in homes that don't have those boundaries around sleep. I think that I think that they're so badly craving it. They're looking for parents to set a really respectful yet firm boundary around sleep because they need it so badly. And and it sounds like it sounds like that's exactly what was happening because when he was at dad's he wasn't really getting that and then he was coming home and he was excited to he was looking forward to having that stability and predictability around sleep at mom's house. And and it sounds like that's what you gave her, which is amazing. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, overall, this helped him a lot too, because apart from bedtime, he was struggling so much with nap time. So this kid was just really overtired, like drastically overtired. So by the point that he saw this is a good thing, and we created this as a positive thing, because the thing is, when you go into this with toddlers, I love taking on toddler cases. I, I prefer them. I love the challenge. Me too. I, I, Me yes. too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, love, I love the challenge. I, I love it. So when we, as the days were going on and I saw, wow, he's becoming more and more receptive to this new norm, to this new reality. He was just, it's just crazy to see where, from where he came to that now he's just, it, it's even crazy because as you know, some toddlers, they love their lovies to sleep at night and it's kind of like their comfort and it's great, but he just got to the point where he told his mom, he doesn't want his lovey anymore because he's just so confident and so content in his bed by himself that he doesn't even need his lovey anymore. So the day mom told me that I got tears to my eyes. I said, wow, this is amazing that this kiddo went through so much at such a young age, no kiddo should ever go through what he went through. But the fact that he went through all of that and, he, and he's so, it's in such a healthy headspace now, it's just so amazing. It's so remarkable. And it shows me that we're not just sending sleep plans. We're changing lives here. Yeah, absolutely. I'm wondering if there were times during the process where you felt in over your head at all. Uh, or did you always feel like you had the tools and the knowledge to get this mom the results she was looking for? Yeah, so there was a point where I found out that there's going to be Wednesdays that he had to go to dad's house. So it was, it was a very odd schedule, meaning, so let's say this week he was, he's with mom. Wednesday, he would have to go back to dad's to sleep at night. So it was at that point I said, oh boy, we're going to have, I'm going to have to really, really make sure I... I am um, first, I'm a supporter to her and also kind of uh, help her out and remind her what we need to change every day. But as far as confidence and knowing this can get done, I knew that from the beginning. My, once I went into this, uh, my husband knows me. I've never really been doubtful of myself when it comes to sleep training or helping a client out. I feel 120 com 20 percent confident with that. For me, it's always been the marketing aspect of it. I <laughs> I know nothing about marketing, but I'm getting there. But in regards to sleep, I'm like, I got this. I know how to do this. It's just about giving them the right support that they deserve. So I knew. I told her, I'm like, we're gonna prove everybody wrong. We're gonna prove everybody wrong and show prove all the books wrong, prove everybody wrong that we can do this. Uh, and I told her, I've never heard a case like this. And it's going to be amazing to share this with my community and show them that there's going to be more single mamas out there. There's going to be single dads out there and they're going to look for sleep support. And we shouldn't be scared to take on these uh, cases because they look a little different from what we're usually used to doing uh, with other families. 
I know that you're just getting started in your sleep business, but I always say that when you do a really great job with families, the business comes because your happy clients will share your name with their network of friends. Are you starting to see that happen for yourself yet in your business? Well, in regards to clients right now, I'm I'm trying to just get my name known out there. I'm just trying to create connection so people know, oh, Ruth is a sleep consultant. Awesome. So, but what I do notice is it's quite the opposite. It's quite funny that right now what I've been getting is mostly invitations to come on and speak on people's Instagrams or just recently a daycare reached out to me, asked me to come on for a fall festival. If I can be one of the vendors there for free, they're like, please just come on. I said, wow, yeah, (laughs) why not? Uh, So it's actually quite funny that I really thought this part of my business would come one or two years into my business and I would be invited to do all of these things later on. But right now I realize I've just been asked to come on and speak on regard in regards to sleep. Uh, So that's mostly where I am right now. And uh, obviously I do want to get to a point where I can have steady income in regards to my clients. But uh, right now it's, just a lot of people just trying to have me come on and speak to their audience, which is wonderful because I love talking. <laughs> yeah, it's am- it, no, I think that's amazing that that people are noticing you and reaching out to you and wanting to share your wisdom with their communities. I think that that is an amazing, amazing place to start. Actually, when I was first uh, getting started in my sleep consulting business, I had the opportunity to work with someone who was sort of like a micro influencer, I would call her. Uh, And she I didn't even ask her to but she had a pretty big Instagram following and I worked with her to help her sleep train her then seven month old baby. And I would say that that is really what sort of propelled my career was that one person who had a you know, moderately large following on Instagram, and literally shared about me every single day, shared the journey, the ups, the downs, the all arounds. She was really honest about it. She didn't sugarcoat it. And and people reached out. So I think that if you are having other businesses and other people who want you to come speak to their communities, that's a really amazing place to be, especially when your business is just a baby. You're just getting started. Uh, speaking about speaking about business, uh, this podcast is about the business side of sleep consulting. So I have to ask if you have any goals for yourself with regard to your business as we head towards a new year. Do you have any goals for 2024? Yeah. So right now, I'd like to see this as the year of setting the foundation. Uh, my husband does home renovations for a living. So he's always like, we need to set a foundation in everything in life. And he always gets all Ted talky with me. <laughs> so I, he's like, we, you need to set the foundation this year. And I knew going into this, my business is not going to go from one day to another. Oh my gosh, well coming in like crazy. I knew going into this, I needed to do the hard work. So this is a year for me. I just want to go all in put in all the hard work and get my name out there and eventually get to, I guess, where I want to be financially. But right now, lately, uh, an idea I has uh, possibly provide some sort of um, coaching uh, support for, uh, for sleep consultants. I realize that there's a huge gap when it comes to the coaching aspect of sleep consulting we are so prepared when it comes to the to the sleep part of it, but I realize some consultants do need that extra help when it comes to what do I do if this situation arises? What do I do? How do I talk to this client? How do I manage this particular situation? So just something in my heart that I'm thinking about uh, that I would love to help more sleep consultants um, better support their parents, better Uh, help them in a way that parents deserve and just give them the tools that they need in order to communicate better, uh, be there for them. I always, I'm a huge believer that you don't need uh, a license. You don't need to have gone to school to show love. You can show love to anyone and you don't need to be a psychologist in order to do that. So I definitely feel like probably a lot of us, we feel a little bit 
uh, like maybe I'm not, I can't give this advice. Maybe I can do this because I'm not equipped for this. When the truth is what this mama really needs is love and someone to listen to her. And I think we can all do that. We're all capable of giving love. And if there's anything I would love to share today with everyone is you can absolutely provide the best support you can to this mom. She's feeding off of your energy. She's feeding off of your confidence. If you guys can do this together and if she sees it, she's going to know, okay, maybe this is not going to work out. But I think if we came from James, Jane's program, we are all one prepared for this journey, sleep consulting journey. And we got this. <laughs> yeah. I think that right there is exactly why you just articulated perfectly why you are 100% going to be a successful sleep consultant. I always say this and, and, you know, I know that you're, you're feeling called to teach other sleep consultants to sort of do what you do. But I have to tell you that I'm not entirely convinced it's teachable because I think that it's like in your heart. I think it legitimately comes from your heart and your soul to give your all to your clients and to show up in a way that is fully present, all encompassing, where you're willing to give everything and anything. And you're not just there for two weeks to clock in and clock out, but you are there to give your everything to them in a way that will serve them in a way that is special and unique. And I think that people either like have that or they don't. Um, yeah. You know, uh, I actually just started with a mom who has a little uh, eight month old baby and he's having a real hard time and their finance, their family dynamic is also really tricky and unusual and I think mom is struggling emotionally. I think baby is struggling emotionally. And I ha I'm like two or three days in with this mom. And I already told her, like, I'm committed to you. I don't care how long this takes. You know, I'm not here for a two week consultation. I'm here to get this right with your family. And like, it might take months and it might take me bringing in other providers to help her, uh, helping her to find a therapist, helping her to find resources in all sorts of areas of her life. And it's not just about sleep consulting. It's about caring for families and showing up to help them in whatever way we can possibly help them to change their lives for the better. And I'm sorry, I'm not really sure it's teachable. Like you either like have <laughs> that in your heart or you don't, you know? And it's so clear to me that you do. And I think that that is what is ultimately going to lead you to success in your business. So I'm really glad that we crossed paths. I always love having students come my way who uh, have that mindset that you have. And I have no doubt that you are going to be a huge success. And I think you're smart to spend the year to lay the foundation and really to put in the hard work on the ground first. I like that your husband gave the analogy of like, what did he call it? The, the foundation. Is, the foundation. The foundation. I love that. <laughs> sometimes it's a physical foundation and sometimes it's like, an emotional foundation, and you're doing all the right things. Uh, before we wrap up, why don't you share your website, your social media, whatever you want to share, I would love for people to check you out. Sure. So my website is paradox, P-A-R-A-D-O-X-Z-Z-Z.com. And my Instagram handle, you can find me there. I'm always trying to be as present as possible. It's Paradox Sleep Consulting. So you can find me there if you uh, just need a friend to talk to. I'm My DMs are always open for anyone. Ruth, thank you so much. This was an awesome conversation. And I'm really grateful that you were willing to share this case study with our audience and our community. So thank you. Sure. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Becoming a Sleep Consultant podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, it would mean so much to me if you would rate, review, and subscribe. When you rate, review, and subscribe, this helps the podcast reach a greater audience. I'm so grateful for your support. 
If you would like to learn more about how you can become a certified sleep consultant, head over to my Facebook group, Becoming a Sleep Consultant, or to my website, thecpsm.com. Thanks so much, and I hope you will tune in for the next episode. 